Hello, my name is Brittany and welcome to Family Friday's Paint Night. A few words before we begin. Happy New Year to my Friday family! I wish good health and blessings to all my participants, family, and friends. Hopefully sometime this year, things will start to get under control and safe enough to do a small session in person. Until then, thank you for your continued interest and support for this workshop. You can expect a new video every third Friday of the month for the foreseeable future until we can resume classes in person at the Art and Spirituality Center. Speaking of which, there are other classes being held virtually if you are interested in taking any of those. I'll leave the link to our virtual calendar in the description box below. As a reminder, my class was made to promote bonding between family and friends. You do not need to be an artist to enjoy art. My art isn't perfect, so don't think yours needs to be either. To all those participating in this activity, I want you to try your best and don't worry about the outcome. My hope is for you to let go, get lost in the artistic process, and forget about what's currently happening in the world, even just for a little bit. One last thing before we begin. Feel free to pause, rewind, fast forward, mute, or do anything you need in order to follow along with this video. I normally take over three hours to complete a painting, even though my class runs about two and a half hours. For the sake of time and to make a short video, the clips you see of me painting are sped up significantly. Please, by all means, relax and take your time. I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. Here is what we will be painting for January of 2021. Disclaimer, this is not my original artwork as I found it somewhere on the internet. I do not take credit for this concept and I wish I could find the original artist to give credit. Think of this as a study of the original artwork. In the hope of a bright and colorful new year, here we have an arrangement of flowers and greenery set inside a jar in front of a black background. Feel free to take artistic control change the colors, make additions or adjustments, or change it up completely. The choice is yours. All right, let's talk about paint. We'll be using acrylic paint for this activity. You can use the fancier, more expensive paints if you want to. For this project, I'll be using paints you can find at your local craft store or even Walmart that are less than $1. We'll need a few colors, pink, red, orange, yellow, green, sky blue, purple, black, and white. We'll need a few brushes today, a large flat brush, a medium flat brush, a small round brush, and a thin detail brush. Optional materials, a pencil, a white colored pencil, or a white acrylic paint pen that you can find at your local craft store or Amazon, like where I found mine. Some other materials we will need something to put under the canvas or canvas board, such as a tablecloth or newspaper. You can also use a matte board, like this one I've used several times. Of course, you'll need something to paint on. I personally will be using a canvas board, 12 by 16 specifically. You can also use an actual canvas of any size too. Then we have our paints. You'll need a plate to put the paint on. You can also use a palette if you have one. A water cup to clean your paint brushes and lastly a paper towel or an old towel I have a towel I've used plenty of times for other paintings as you can see here okay order of operations how this painting will go first we will paint all of the canvas black you can use a different color if you want to next we will sketch out our jar measuring about halfway from the bottom I'm gonna make a little mark right here and then measuring about halfway will be the top of the jar. About an inch, inch and a half to two inches is where the bottom of that twisty part of the jar will be. And that's probably about a third. A third of the canvas is where that bottom mark will be. And then about an inch in, that little mark right there, I'm just gonna make a nice little bend for the jar. And then I'm gonna connect that line off the canvas and that's gonna be the little twisty part of the jar. and make those lines to connect them. Next, I am going to start with the stems, um, stopping about right here where the water is. Let's make a little line actually, so probably about two inches from the bottom is where I'm gonna put my water. So I'm going to 
sketch out all of these stems stopping where that watermark is and that's because we are going to give the illusion that the stems are a little bit magnified by being in the water so from that line we're going to continue the stem but just off a little bit so once we do that we're going to finish drawing out those stems then we are going to map out where we want our flowers to be starting with the centers and then the petals we're going to start with the top bottom left and right and then just fill in the spaces between while we're there we are going to draw out our leaves I have a big one coming out from that red one right there a couple of stems one peeking out from that yellow one adding these leaves and adding two more right here some more stems mapping out where I want our flowers to be sketching out that and then these big petals right here for the petal going off of the page and then don't forget that little leaf right there. Next, we are going to paint. So that was just drawing, now we're gonna paint. First, we're going to paint all of our stems and all of our leaves green. This might take a couple of layers. And then we are going to paint and outline our jar in white with our little water line as well. And then with a dry brush, we're going to make the reflection of the glass. So it looks like a glass jar. And then we are going to do a couple of layers of this. So this painting isn't difficult. It just takes a lot of layers. And then so you can always flip back and forth between the pinks, the reds, the yellows, the purple, um, just to get a couple of layers in. Once all that is dry, we will add the last details of outlining all of these flowers in a different color. And then adding all these little details of white, and we'll be done. Okay, first things first, we need to transform this white canvas into a black canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and pour out some black and just paint anything I see that is white black. So as you can see, what I'm about to do right now is paint the edges, or if you have a canvas, the sides. Um, I personally like to have the picture continue over the edges, so that's why I paint um, the sides and the corners of my canvas. So I'm going to do that first and then paint everything black. I will check back in with you when we are ready to start drawing. Okay, let's start drawing. So off camera, I went ahead and with my pencil started drawing this out already. So I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to sketch this out in a white colored pencil so you can see better. So we're going to start drawing our jar. And I'm realizing right here that you really can't see what I'm doing. So eventually I will change to my white acrylic paint pen. Um, so you don't have to go out and buy that or anything. It's just it shows up way better on camera So I'm just trying my best right now so you can see it But I went ahead and sketched out the jar and now I am doing the twisty part
So measuring about two inches from the bottom of my jar, I'm gonna go ahead and make a line going off of the canvas and that is to serve as the water line. Then I'm gonna start sketching out my stems of the flowers. So like you see with this first one, I stopped right where the water line is and then I went ahead and just made another additional line continuing that angle but just slightly to the right and this is to give the illusion that the flowers are a little bit magnified because they are in water. So I'm going to go ahead and finish sketching out my stems right now. Okay, so I went ahead and switched over to my acrylic paint pen and wow, look at that difference. You can definitely tell what I'm doing now. So I went ahead and drew the center of the flowers and then I'm going to start with the outside petals. I did a little U shape, a little rounded line on the top, bottom, left and right and then just connected those between. So again, top, bottom, right, and left, and then connect those petals right between. Okay, so now we're going to move on to this leaf that's coming off of the reddish-orange flower. So the way I'm going to do this leaf is just basically kind of like zigzags, or if you look at it, it kind of looks like stairs a little bit. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. You can do whichever leaf you want, and I'm just going to add a little one right here as well. So let's move on to these ones. Um, this will serve as the stems of what I'm drawing right here. It's kind of in the shape of a tulip a little bit. I'm honestly not exactly sure what this is because I'm going to paint it green. Um, so I'm just going to draw a U shape and then a V in the center and another V right there and some little lines coming out from the top. And then I'm going to draw another big line coming from behind that yellow one and then just draw little leaf shapes between. It's kind of like an oval shape for the most part with maybe a little point at the bottom when it comes closer to the middle of the stem. So I'm just going to do that right now. I'm not exactly sure what flower this is. It kind of looks like berries to me, which I'm totally okay with, but I'm gonna draw these little circles right here in between um, these two leaves and these flowers. And then I'm gonna connect them all together with stems coming from this red flower. And then coming off the top right here, I'm going to add another little leaf. And then from this red one, I'm going to draw some stems coming out. And then again, more of these kind of tulip shaped flowers. I'm going to draw a smaller one, a medium one, and then a larger one. And then with lines coming out of it. We're almost done drawing here. So now I am going to draw the last big flower. These are the outside petals coming off of the canvas. And then just another little layer right in between. And another little leaf right there. And just so everyone can see better of what we drew previously, I'm just going to trace everything that we went over once we started drawing.
Okay, so now with the fun painting begins. So we have three different shades of green that we are going to be switching off from. So this looks like a darker green, but it's actually just a normal, regular color green. I think it's called like forest green or something. So the first one is going to be the darkest. This yellow one that I'm pouring out right here is going to be a yellow green. And then now I'm going to add some sky blue to this last one. It's kind of going to serve as a sky blue teal shape or teal color. I'm not sure how to best describe it. So here I'm just going to be mixing it and you can mix it to your liking. You can make them um, different colors, different shades of green. If you already have pre-made green colors, that is okay too. I just think it's fun to make your own custom colors sometimes. So I'm just going to play with these a little bit and then we are going to start painting our stems. So I was just really excited for the color that I just made. It was really pretty, that sky blue teal color. So I went ahead and painted this stem first. So again, I did the bottom being a little skewed right of the rest of the stem. So it looks like it's in water. But after this, I did switch over to doing darkest to lightest. So I started with that first green, did a couple of stems, switched over to that yellow green color, and then lastly I did go back to this sky blue teal color. So um, you can play with it, it just all depends. Um, have fun with it, and I will check back with you when we are going to move on to the rest of our greenery.
So now we are going to start moving on to the rest of the greenery. I'm going to use that sky blue teal color and paint this leaf with that color and then I will paint part of the tulips that color as well as that top leaf in the top left hand corner with all the little oval leaves. I will paint that as well. So the hard part of this painting is over. Um, which was just drawing everything. So if you made it this far, yay! Now it's just gonna be fun. So this painting is very simple if you look at it. Um, it's just a bunch of shapes and solid colors. There's no blending that goes into this or anything. So with this painting, the length of this video is a little bit long, but that's just because some of these colors being on a black canvas it took a couple of layers so I did have to go over some of these colors multiple times depending on what kind of paint you use if you're using the more um, expensive professional grade acrylic paintings you acrylic paints you might not have to do this go over multiple times but I'm just using what I had and basically what I prefer are these craft paints because they're inexpensive and they are a bit more opaque than some of these other ones. Um, I'm just going to go over everything probably two or three times, especially these flowers. So I will check in and let you know what colors I'm about to do, but for the most part it's just coloring everything in to your liking. So right now I am just going to use that sky blue teal color and paint the top of these tulips green with this green that top left hand corner leaf um, some of the stems coming from the tulips towards the right side and that little hidden leaf um, from the middle right side so take your time have fun if you need to mute this video or pause feel free to do so and I will see you in a little bit Hello, hello again. So now I'm going to dip into my darkest green that I have, which is that forest green, and I'm going to paint the bottom of these tulip shapes with that color. So I'm going to 
doing that right now, then I'll move on to the other one. And with this green, we're also going to be using that for the leaf that is coming off from the top left flower, um, that little one up there. And then also the oval shaped leaf, leaf <laughs> that we painted where my hand is, I'm going to split those in half with that darker green and that's just to give it some dimension, a little bit of color. So you'll see what I'm doing. It's just basically splitting it in half and making the bottom portion with that darker green. And then I will go in on the first leaves that we painted. I will um, paint the veins and the center of that leaf with my dark green and my detail brush. That's what I'm using right now. So just the fine little details. Um, you can skip this part if you want to. You can use a different color green does not matter it is up to you but that is what I am doing and I will check back in when we will use the last color green that we made Okay, so lastly, with our yellow-green green, <laughs> I'm going to um, paint all of the stems. So I'm going to do that middle one of the leaf that I'm just doing right now, and then all of these other little stems that we have not painted, plus the little lines coming from the center of these flowers, that's all going to be painted with that yellow-green color. Um, and then lastly, those two bottom leaves, the ones that I say look like zigzags, I will paint just the bottom portion of it, outline it in that green, and that little hidden leaf as well. I will paint both of those green. Um, I just felt like that sky blue teal color 
blended in with the jar and those other stems too much so I just wanted to differentiate it just a little bit so have fun and I will see you when we are ready to start painting our jar Okay, so now we are going to start outlining our jar in white using our detail brush. Everything that we traced out in our white acrylic pen, I'm just going to go over in white. And on camera and even in person, this white stands out against the black and all of these colors. So if this is a little too much for you, um, you can try muting it down a little bit with some black just making it look like maybe a little gray if you want to i don't mind i love black and white together with colors so this is perfect for me but if this is a little too unrealistic for you you are more than welcome to change the color of this jar so i'm going to go ahead and just paint this jar the twisty part of the lid and also just paint the water line after that is dry, we will give the illusion of water, but I'll come back for that. So just finished painting your jar and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so now we are going to start working on the water. So with my small round brush, I'm just gonna get some white paint and some water and just water that paint down. And getting as close to the water line as I possibly can, um, and then this watered down paint, I'm just gonna make little circles and I'm gonna keep adding more, getting it more of an opaque color closer to that line and just making my way down with it. I'm going to go ahead and add some water just to dilute it a little bit and I'm just going to go back and forth to my liking. I'm going to take some away like how I'm doing right now and add some back in just to give it a little something that you can tell it's water or there's something in the jar besides just a random line. So that is how I did my water. So now we're going to move on to the reflection of the light on the jar. So with that same watered down paint and my dry brush, I'm going to go ahead and dip that in with my medium flat brush, kind of dry it off a little bit, and just make a little nice curve, kind of like a right angle, but curved in the corner. 
and it's not supposed to be dark it's not supposed to be opaque you're supposed to be able to see the stems and see that water line through it so it's better to add more than to take away so if you need to just test it out at first with a little bit I would start with that and if you feel like there needs to be more I would add more because we can't take away quick little step right here this top leaf I'm just going to add the center and the veins in black similar to how we did our other leaves now with my purple paint I'm gonna go ahead and color in I'm gonna call them berries um, I'm gonna fill in all of these little circles with purple my purple is a bit thick but if you need to add multiple layers, you are more than welcome to do so. Now we are getting closer to finishing. Um, the jar and the leaves did take a little bit longer, but now we're gonna start to add the colors to the flowers. So the top one in the on the left side is more of a yellow-orange. That's what I'm mixing right here. I mixed yellow and orange. And then the other one, this red, I mixed orange and red together. So these ones um, are a bit transparent. A bit translucent so I will go over this at least two or three times I want to say at least three times same with the red one as well again if your paint is a little bit thicker or you don't mind how this looks your painting might go a little bit faster but I'm just letting you know for me my paint was a little bit transparent so that's a little, another reason why this video is a little bit longer I had to do multiple layers but right now I am just focusing on getting these two flowers as opaque as possible. I think between these ones I might go ahead and work on some of the other colors as well, which is just a pink color and like a pinky orange color for the other little tulips up top. Just as I mentioned before, between I'm gonna float around between all of these flowers between layers, um, just so one can dry while I'm painting the other. So right now I'm gonna focus on these three little tulips up top. So I mixed together my pink that I had, which was a little bit darker. So I mixed it with white to create a light pink. So I'm going to do a couple layers of these three as well.
Okay, so these three tulips up top, they do have a second layer that is a different color. So I went ahead and mixed that pink with a little bit of that red from the red flower to create this dark peachy color. And basically what I'm doing here is I am copying the shape of what we just did with the light pink and these flowers. So if you look at it, um, the darker side is on the outside. So it kind of looks like the flower is opening up and we're seeing that from this angle that we're at. So I'm going to first try to mimic that shape as much as possible. But on the left and right sides, I'm going to extend that out a little bit and that will look like it's creating a curve of the flower. So go ahead and work on these and I will check back in when we're ready to move on. So now we go back to the berries. I actually really like the way that it looks right now, and I probably should have stopped right here, but I was just trying to go off of what the reference picture had. The reference picture had these dark spots in the middle. I think it was to make it look more circular. Might have used a wrong color or something, um, but I you don't have to do this part if you don't want to. I might change it back. I probably will change it back. But just going off of what I painted, I'm going to explain as best as I can. So with the opposite end of one of my brushes, I just basically made circles inside of our berries. So now we move on to our last flower that we need to paint in before we add all of our last details. So I made yet another shade of pink by just adding in white to a color that I already had. And I painted that, I painted the outside petals with those colors. I'm just testing it out here and I liked it. So we're just going to paint those with that new color I made. And the inside petals I mainly got white and just added a little bit of pink so it's even lighter than what you see right here. So go ahead and finish painting this flower and we will move on to adding the details.
So now I'm moving on to these flowers. They're all nice and dry and opaque. So with my detail brush or my medium round brush, I'm going to make the center of these flowers as circular as I possibly can. You can make them smaller, bigger, maybe no center. It is completely up to you. So now I am going to pour out my regular pink, which is just the darkest pink that I had. And with my detail brush, I'm going to go in towards the center of that light, light pink color and just basically make a bunch of lines, which is the center of the flower. And it kind of looks like a little star a little bit. And now I am moving on to my red flower. So I just mixed a little bit of orange with red again. Just not as much red this time, emphasis on the orange. So now I am just outlining the outside of that flower with that color. And then I will outline the center of the flower as well. Then we will move on to adding all of our different petal layers. So now that we traced the center of the flower, we're going to move on to the petals. There's no perfect way to do this. I was just kind of going with the flow. I was just making little U shapes going around the center. They're not all perfect. They're not all symmetrical. They're not all the same size. Just wherever I saw a space, I fit in a petal right there. So I did about five rows, five layers of these petals. You can do no layers if you want to. You can do different shaped petals. It is completely up to you, but I am just working my way up to the very edge and trying to connect it as best as I can. So now I am going to mix the yellow color for the yellow outline of our orange flower. I'm getting some white with yellow. Um, you can make it whichever colors you want to. Mine is a little bit on the brighter side because I used a little bit more white, but you can definitely tone it down if you want to. So again, we're just going to outline the outside of those petals, just like how we do with the red flower. Then we will move on to the center. And then lastly, we will do our layers of petals going towards the outside.
So now with the extra white that I have with the opposite end of one of my brushes, I'm just going to go, go ahead and dip into the white and just add some dots to the center of these flowers. And I forgot to mention to add some to where the berries are and the group of three tulips at top. This kind of looks like baby's breath to me. And then also the center of the tulips to add white dots to the end of those green lines. We are just moments away from finishing, so I'm just going to go ahead and mix these last two colors to outline the flowers. So that darker pink color that we haven't outlined yet, I'm mixing it um, kind of with the peachy color but a little bit darker. I'm going to go ahead and outline that with that color and then I probably used the same color or just made it a little bit lighter for the inside layer, that light, light pink color, and then we will be done. Yay! And that is it my friends. Good job if you made it this far and completed the painting. I'm happy with my finished product and I hope you are with yours too. If your painting looks different from mine, that is totally fine. As you know, I miss everyone and I really wish I were with my family Friday class painting alongside them. I'm also happy to know that more people have had the chance and opportunity to do art safely at home and on their own time. I am thankful for the friendships I have made because of this class and I cannot wait to make more when we are able to gather again. I hope these videos bring you joy and you are able to relax and not worry about the current events of the world even just for a little bit. Please stay safe, have a great rest of your weekend, and a happy new year. I'll see you next time.